Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm here in LA. In the UK, we got Demi Ramos. What's up, Demi? Hello. And our <laughs> guest today is Skylar Simone. What's going on? Hello. How are you? I'm 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 pretty good. I'm pretty good. good. I'm I'm learning. Uh, I just discovered the joy of sparkling water recently. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I've been, really? I've been kind of dissing it for a long time okay. and I, and I kind of, I get it now. Now you're a fan. Now. The all thing right, about it is right. when you really want to quench your thirst, yeah. don't do a sparkling, <laughs> but if you're like eating it with a meal, it's great. See, I was just at dinner yesterday and I was having a conversation with someone there and they said the exact same thing. Like oh, when really? I'm eating a meal, it's different than when you're just enjoying water. It's are, like two different occasions. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you a sparkling or a flat water person? I'm like definitely a flat water. I feel like if we're going to have to go through the sparkles, like those bubbles and stuff like that, it has to, have, it has to be alcoholic. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. It has to have a little bit more pizzazz. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. 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 No, I get that. I get that. Okay. Yeah, um, I do too. So let's talk about you and your music and not sparkling water. It's um, okay. I'm, I'm a fan of sparkling yeah, water. So you have, you have your latest single, Shiver. Yes. And it's part of a greater thing. It's part of an EP, right? It is. It is part of an EP. Now, yes. um, you released the single, you released the video. Mm -hmm. um, are Do you enjoy making videos, first of all? Some oh, people, 100%. You don't view it as like a chore? No. This is no, a no, chore. No, 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 no. I'm the opposite. But, I'm like, when are we shooting the video? When are we shooting the video? When are we shooting the video? Oh, okay. So you love, yes. are you, do you get into the style and like the aesthetics and oh, the clothes and all that kind of stuff? Every single aspect of it, I'm all over for sure. And I work with such amazing people, which I'm really blessed to. So it, it makes the process even more fun. Have you had a consistent team over the years? Like, you know, people you worked with or? Um, I'm a very loyal person and I also love the growth. So when I find people that I feel like it, we equally mesh and click, I love to continue working with them over long, long, long periods of time. Um, recently though, I actually um, extended my team and started working with an amazing creative director and which is just great to be able to bounce my ideas off of and um, have someone that can fully kind of make sure on the back end that everything is just very consistent and almost bring new ideas that I wouldn't have maybe thought of before. So getting that workflow great. down yeah. is really important. Getting like oh, a system sure. down where like this idea goes to this person and it's yes. filtered this way and that kind of thing was really helpful. Yeah. Especially when doing videos and everything too, like a lot of ideas and things can get lost in translation sometimes. So it's right. nice to have someone there to help streamline everything. And yeah. Um, yeah, but I love that whole process. It was so fun creating the era of this next or the mood board of this next era. Right, yeah. right, right. Are you a big mood board person? I am. I'm definitely a Are big... You a, do you have a Pinterest thing I going do. on? I do. I have like four different accounts. I feel like I feel like every time I feel like Pinterest is kind of going out out of style, it just kind of comes back. It does. It's it, like Snapchat. It I thought Snapchat was going to die like four times and then it just, <laughs> just keeps going. I know. That's why I won't delete mine. I'm like, it's going to have like its its moment eventually. Yeah. What's your... What's on the mood board? Like, go ahead, um, go ahead, Demi. Era, like, what does the mood board look like? like mine? All, all of them? Well, I have one for style. I have one for decor, so I recently moved, so it was all like, I don't know, I went from like ranch style, like woodsy to then ultra modern, I don't, I don't know, my, my boards are all over the place, but the board for the uh, Shiver era, I guess we'll say, um, honestly, which is hilarious, the overall word is like Moroccan spices, Moroccan spice. <laughs> because if you look up Moroccan spices, the color palette, that's literally what started the entire conversation, and we've kind of based everything off of that so it's a lot of rich like bold like warm oranges and like deep Ooh, okay. blues and um and then also like i'm such like a i love excessive jewelry if you can't tell this yeah. is mild right now but i so it's a lot of gold jewelry stacks like i don't know the most rings you've ever seen so when it comes to fingers. jewelry are you like nice fancy stuff or are you just no. like cheap stuff that looks cool? Oh, like I'm at like, is Forever 21 still open? I don't know if it <laughs> is, but like H&M, like uh, eBay, I don't know. Like I just find whatever I can and I just throw it on. I don't, that kind of stuff doesn't yeah, really my, matter. My, you can't tell. Yeah, my is is stainless steel from Amazon. No one can tell. Yeah, and, it yeah. Just, and it's fine. The stainless steel stuff is great. That's what I mean. Like yeah. this, like right now I'm going to like out myself, but this isn't real. This says like Louis Vuitton <laughs> on it. It is not. So, you know, yeah. but it looks cool. So, Demi's, like, hey. kind, Demi's kind of a minimalist <laughs> when it comes to jewelry and, and accessories and stuff. It's because really? I lose everything. No, I, I do that too. <laughs> but if it's something that's like not worth a whole ton, you feel less bad about losing it because then you're like, oh, I'm that like way with sunglasses. Times. No way in the world I'm getting like a $400 <laughs> pair of sunglasses. I, was like, I literally brought pretty much hoop earrings like 
to this trip. I lost uh -huh. one of them already. I can't find another one. I love hoops. You can't go wrong with hoops. Yeah, they go yeah, with everything. You got, you got, you got, I'm pretty yeah. sure I got the hoops in right now, too. No, yeah. Raised in Wisconsin. What was that? Raised in Wisconsin, though, right? Raised uh, all over the U.S. Partially in Wisconsin, yes, but I also grew up in New Orleans for a period of time. And then I was born in Florida, so I have like eight hometowns. It's <laughs> how much? How much? I know you, you've been around like horses and stuff. Um, or do you consider yourself like an outdoors person? And not. I like indoor outdoors. Like I love plants inside, but <laughs> I don't not. I like plants outside too. But like, the, it's more so the bugs and everything. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No thanks, no thanks, no thanks. <laughs> but I love bringing greenery indoors, and I love fresh air and all of that too. But when you can minus the the bugs, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm from Missouri, from Kansas City. Go, hey, go Chiefs. They are go like, Chiefs. what's the staple? I'm from Missouri thing. I don't know. Like, that's the weird thing about Missouri is that it's kind of in between. It's not really Southern. It's not really Northern. It's kind of like, it's very, it is rural. Um, mm -hmm. I did grow up riding horses and like, you know, going that's to my cool. grandma's farm and stuff. Oh. Um, yeah. I used to do equestrian stuff and I used to wear like the Garth Brooks like there you go. shirts, <laughs> which was really cool. Um, I, I'm sure I can dig up a photo. Yeah, I want to see a picture. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, there really is no, st and there's really no accent from where I'm from either. So yeah. 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 Wisconsin definitely has an accent. Yeah. I don't know if I have it, but my mom definitely sometimes I'll catch her and she'll say something and it's like it's the vowels are elongated. So it's Mom's like over here Wisconsin, the side. like <laughs> McDonald's, like it's like everything is like ah uh, like, Yeah, like <laughs> the, the, the vowel, the vowel. The short, yeah. the short A's. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. What's um, your background, Skylar? Like I feel like you're so exotic looking. It's so hard to tell. Like um, what is your yeah, what's your nationality? What's your twenty three and me? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well actually mm -hmm. I am five percent. No, I'm just mm -hmm. I am mixed. So my dad is black and my mom is white um so and then they and what's that one meme and then they had me mm. hi <laughs> um so yeah and then obviously i grew up kind of all over the u.s i actually have pretty like wavy-ish curly hair but you are just like slaying the curls and i feel like every girl with curls mm. knows they have that one product that just works for them but they've had to figure out what that product is along the line yes. so what is your hair routine for all the it's so funny that you say that because girl literally last night i ran into my mom's room and i was like mom I was like, I just found finally, after my 22 years of living, the product that I can, like, I noticed such a visible difference in my curls. The brand is called Virtue. Um, Influencer deal coming up. Yeah, Virtue, come on. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually great. The It's a six in one, they say styling cream. And I'm telling you when I used it, it was like, whoa. Like I actually got super excited and I've tried so many different products and a lot of them are great. But you have to kind of come up with your own concoction of like eight different creams that give you that result. And this was a one, I, one thing in my hair and it was like, boom. So thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad the curls are looking, are looking nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank um, you. And, and Demi always, uh, Demi had an answer, but you, you're, do you have like a intricate skincare routine or are you just like. What whatever? I've learned is simpler, the better for, I have such sensitive skin. Um, and I feel like I even get overwhelmed with how many on my Instagram, TikTok feed, whatever it may be. It's like, try this, try this. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know where to start. Um, so I just keep it simple. I just wash my face with a really gentle cleanser and I do um, a little bit. It's called benzoyl peroxide. So it just keeps kind of acne away like a little bit and then moisturizer and then that's it. That's all I do. Nice, yeah. nice, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm getting into the Korean uh, face masks, like the, Ooh. the collagen, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good too. Yeah. I know a lot of people are men into have the skin oil too. Men have skin too. They do. You need to yeah. take care of your skin. You need under eye patches, like oh, yeah. all of that. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You do you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned, you know, uh, get, having a team together and being able to mm. work on these videos and stuff. A lot of it, you know, you, you, you recently signed a Def Jam and I that's did. like your big thing, you know, they're awesome. Um, <laughs> now you'd been independent artists you've been on smaller labels in yes. the past so what changed specifically when you got signed to Def Jam um I think it was really I understood and appreciated it so much more too just how quality of a team and people that are there because I've been in and out of so many different situations starting so young and being thrown kind of into the label uh ordeal so quickly um I signed my first deal when I was like 11 12 yeah. um which is very <laughs> young and I was learning as I went and obviously that didn't go 
great. And I learned some a lot from that, which is what led me to want to be independent for so long was just to be able to grow and as a person and also just in age and as a young woman and just really finding my identity and what I wanted to say and the music I wanted to make um, without any outside pressures. So I was really lucky that I was able to do that for a really good chunk of time. And then I reached a point where I just felt like I was ready again, but I was more prepared. I knew what I was looking for. Same with any relationship. It's kind of like you have that one that makes you reflect and then you heal yourself and figure yourself out. And then you're like, I know what I want. Um, So I definitely had a very clear vision of and also I'm a very uh trust your gut person so going into just meeting people and talking I'm very also like I have to just listen to my heart because I don't feel like I really did that the first time around in my past experience um and obviously dealing with Tunji at Def Jam and the whole team it just it felt really right and it felt like family um and it was just like it was just one of those I just knew I just knew that it was right and I was really excited going into it I didn't have any nerves really I just felt like this is going to be really great um which you know that's hard navigating in the business can it can be hard to feel that way especially having had a weird situation before um so I knew that that was like a really good sign and I wanted to just follow my intuition with that so uh yeah what was recording the EP like now this is all under Def Jam the EP Mm -hmm. is right yes it will be so um was that how did that, that compare to your previous albums this like uh, you mean the process the of process creating and it, like how f- f- fast, yeah. it went, how quickly, went, how smooth yeah. it went. It was it was a very honestly it was a very super rewarding and great, but also super difficult and hard um, because I was just I put a lot of pressure on myself too because I was so excited and all of these things that almost like worked against me too because I was like it just has to be great it has to like embody every single thing that I've been waiting for in my 12 years of being in the industry and so like there was a lot of that but at the same time I was also like wanting to just be not overthink it at the same time so it was like that counter like don't overthink it but overthinking it and I it was hard to find that balance um but I really just had to be patient that was the key word Uh, it was just patience 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 and letting the process lead me rather than trying to lead the process um and I feel like it ended up working out pretty good so i'm really excited about it it definitely was like a ah moment when yeah it all the, came the reason we brought it up was that uh you know demi uh will often bring up about like how much uh how picky you are in the studio and yeah all that kind of thing and, <laughs> very much you know, so um are you are you a perfectionist when it comes to like you know this sounds gotta sound just like this this snare sure. has got to be just like this for sure when it comes to sounds i feel like i when I'm working with someone who I feel that connection with, I'm very trusting. I'm like, you know what you're doing. Lead me. I'm not always right. Like I never claim to be the smartest person in the room or or to know what's right or wrong. Um, But I definitely know what I like. (laughs) I definitely make known like what I like, but I'm very like when it comes to my part, like vocals and the vocal production side and layering and this and that, like I'm very, very picky. Like it almost drives uh, people in the studio with me nuts because I'll end takes before I'll like be in mid take and they're like, why did you stop? Like that could have been great. Right. Uh, so yeah, so I'm definitely a perfectionist for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now you've done, I'm going to do this again. Yep. You're good. <laughs> um, you, you've done uh, a little bit of TV work, mm-hmm. uh, back in the day, you did a little Disney action. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah. we had Laura Morano on the show Aww, a while back. She was super she's mean. So, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, she's like the nicest <laughs> person. She is. She is. She is. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself getting more into the acting stuff? I mean, that's really common now to have like the hybrid career. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's all like what makes sense and what feels right. Again, like I said, I'm like, I've become such a very intuition based person too. And, but I'm also really open, like I'm open-minded and, um, I would love for the right opportunities and things to come along. And I definitely keep my eyes looking on, uh, things that potentially seem interesting to me in the acting world. And I'm definitely very open. Um, so I'm just kind of, I'll go with the flow in that sense and see kind of where it takes me. Yeah. yeah, yeah what yeah. would be like your dream role? Like if you could pick one, you could think of one. That's so hard. See, it's so funny because I feel like because my music is more like it feels, at least to me, it feels like it's, it's fun and like lighthearted because it's like the performance and this and it's like kind of this like, yeah, like high of high moments. I 
with acting, it's almost I want to do the complete opposite. I want to do something really dark <laughs> and very serious and um, just complete opposite field. I feel like that would be really cool to do you like horror to movies? tap in. See, I like horror movies, but I, I really can't watch them alone mm. at night. Like <laughs> I have to be in the right mood and watch I'm them the at the right time. I'm, I'm a big weenie. Yeah, yeah, no, but I love, I mean, does it count as a horror movie though? Cause I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely. thought it was hilarious though. Y'all. I did not think that movie was scary. Like the new one? <laughs> yeah, no, oh. Oh, <laughs> they were, they were good, but they were not scary. My mom, yeah. my mom did all the Stephen King stuff when I was a kid and uh, it was just like, no. Yeah, no, I'm, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. like I made the mistake of watching The Conjuring at like midnight one night. I was like, mm, no, nah, not again. <laughs> Demi, what's your favorite scary movie? Scary movie. Um... That's a good one. There's a lot. I don't know. Watching watching scary movies or just movies in general is a little bit hard for me. Yeah. To concentrate. I'm not a visual person. Yeah. What's your favorite genre? Do you like romantic comedy? Yeah, she can do rom coms. I will Drama. say though, one thing that comes to mind, remember the scary movie like one, two, three, four sort of thing? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. That's kind of funny, you know? Every time I hear like scary movie one, two, three, four, I think of back uh, when I was growing up, there was like, it was, I mean, people, now I feel like, damn, they don't even have DVDs anymore. I I'm like, DVD back when I was, there were DVDs. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> but that's not even that long ago, which is funny. Yeah. But there were in my parents' house and I just remember being like, you're not allowed to watch those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's every time I think of scary movies, uh, one, two, three, four, all those, I yeah, just think I of think that. I think the greatest <laughs> casualty from the DVD is um, they don't have the, the director's commentary anymore. Those, yeah, those that's are really true. great. That was really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Demi, Demi had to take off, I think. Uh, so it's just us now. It's okay. Yeah. She was like, you you really offended me with that scary movie. <laughs> I kind of, yeah, I kind of caught her off. Uh, She's I like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Yeah, was, I don't need that. I don't need that anymore. No. Yeah. So um, with the rollout of the EP, do you got shows, um, like either TV appearances or... Um, uh, you know, like uh, concerts, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. That's definitely something we've been talking about. Um, I haven't been on the road in a minute because I've just been working on this project for the past couple of years. So uh, it's definitely something that I want to do this year and I'm going to do and I'm really excited about. I didn't even check. Do you live in LA or? I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm local. How do you like it here? Um, so I go back and forth between Orange County and also oh. LA. I've saw like my a, family is in Orange County. It's really so. nice down there. I see. That just feels like home. I was just having this conversation too. Is like home truly like is where the heart is, and my family's all there now. So uh, it's LA has definitely become. I'm always here for work, and I love it for that. It's great. It's super creative, and there's so much to do, and it's very diverse, which I love. Um, but Orange County, just like being by the water, and, and the traffic is thinner, and the too. traffic's way better. You don't need a bathroom key to go I to the bathroom. I had to go down to Fullerton yeah. <laughs> for a thing a while ago, which is like, did the, you like it? The greatest part of Orange County. Yeah. But a uh, shout out Fullerton, <laughs> love Fullerton. Um, but I just noticed, like, once you cross into Orange County, it just like opens up. Like it just feels it really does looser. Or it something. does. Yeah. It does. It's like the energy it just lifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So take me back to Little Skylar. Um, when did you uh when did you realize that music was going to be your thing or so I, I had like a there was a specific moment and it's so funny because I feel like it sounds so corny saying the story because it's like oh okay how did you know but I did I did know I had a moment where I was like this is what I want to do there was um a talent show uh that I was supposed to play the piano in when I was nine in Wisconsin and they ended up I like flubbed my audition and they also I could just tell they didn't really want another piano player so they asked if I could sing. And at that point in time, I never, I'm, I swear when I say this, I never sing at all. So you just like opened your mouth. I did. I was like, like, well, I'm here already. I might, might as well. So I did. And I ended up getting in for the singing and I sang in it. And it was just one of those moments where I was just like, oh, like I just knew this is what I was meant to do. Like I finally found my calling at nine, like as if like, like I was struggling from, for years. Like one of the sister, well, that sounds <laughs> yeah. like a scene from my like school rock or sister act or something. Yes, like, it really was. Like, All right, Skylar, can you sing? And all of a sudden you're like singing like Lauren Hill. Then she's like, da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. And I was doing that stuff too. Like I was <laughs> growling away and yeah. I was like, I don't know who my nine year old self thought I was. You, I remember I got off stage and I was like, mom, <laughs> I'm better than Beyonce. I'm like, girl, <laughs> you no, really you were not. That? Did you really say that? <laughs> I, 
ass cream. I 100 percent did. But it was just like the high because I look back and I'm like, I was delusional. The Lulu is but definitely. Yeah, but, the, but the confidence <laughs> counts. The confidence. I just knew. Counts. Yeah, I just knew. And then yeah. literally from that day forward, it was I started like doing anthems and traveling and singing yeah, you've done and a writing. Bunch, you've done and national anthems a lot, a lot over the a place. Lot, yeah. And do you have a um, now there's obviously different ways to do it. Mm-hmm. How did you develop your version of the anthem? So it's really funny. I've actually stuck pretty close to my original version through the years. Um, I've actually simplified it since when I was younger. Uh, I think I got like I was introduced to runs, and then I was I just you go did land them every the free, five do you like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, but mm. I like when I was young. That definitely something that little Skyler like, like would the, have definitely done. I used the, to do the, no, the, the growls. Style. Yeah, I'd be like hey, on the rock. It was yeah. I was like, who do you think you are? Uh, <laughs> but no, I just I just kind of like just hit uh, what is it trial and error. Like you just kind of have to try different things, and then I'd be like. Mm, have you ever been nervous good. for an anthem because of the crowd or the event or yeah yes definitely but more like wanting just wanting to do well like yeah, but excited to do it not like i want it to be over oh i'm so nervous it's more like i'm so excited and i just please let it go good yeah. um so knock on wood so far <laughs> so good <laughs> you're uh your 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 dad played in the nfl he did um so did you grow up around that at all or did you yeah. go to the stadium and stuff mm-hmm. and, and go to the locker room and yeah you were like the kid and like i was the, yeah <laughs> i did was did you enjoy it i did i mean i i was so little that i don't remember too much of it yeah. um but i definitely have a lot of photos of my dad at training camp and me kind of running over to him and uh Really cute. Did and the athletic genes get passed. No. That's no. why I sing. <laughs> I thought maybe, you know, maybe basketball no. or softball or something. No, if my dad thought I had any athletic bone in my body, I would not be here right now. I would be in the Olympics because he was definitely trying to push that agenda. And I was the kid in the outfield picking their nose, like running the wrong direction, scoring for the other team. It was, it yeah, was just run bad. Run to third base. Literally. Of first base. It was just yeah. bad. Like I literally have videos of me mm. playing soccer when I was little and I'd run over to my mom and be like, when are we getting snacks mm. afterwards? Like I still do that now, honestly, but like I, yeah, I yeah, was I, not I, interested. I played, I played indoor <laughs> soccer and it was one of those places where they had like sponsors on the wall, you oh, know, that's like cool. tire shots yeah, and yeah. stuff. And I would just like walk around and look at the signs and like, read them the game. yeah and then when i would get tired i would just lay on the ground and like the coach would come <laughs> and like carry me off the field but I, that I, sounds honestly i did end like up me. playing baseball for several years you. And, you know so i i did kind of grow into it I'm, so. I'm a baseball yeah. guy in fact okay. i started out in sports writing but that's awesome but you know what I, I couldn't stand the idea of going into a locker room after a loss and being like what was it like to lose or like uh, what could you have done differently like yeah. wh- how did you screw up like what that's <laughs> you know? true i mean i feel like i still do the music industry wise it's like i do the same but i can it is at least it's just like me like it's more of like you kind of control so it's like you did this with a team effort there's so many other things that go into it yourself oh for sure for sure yeah yeah some people never good enough (laughs) like i mean on myself like i'm always like there's always something to be learned there's always something you can grow from so it's like you smell celebrate the small victories but it's always like okay on to the next how do i improve how can i make this better always now your mom's sitting over here um how like how much did she like guide you in terms of getting your career off the ground Mm -hmm. i know it's always difficult for parents because they don't want to be too much of like a stage mom oh for sure (laughs) but they also want to like be supportive so what was that how how was that experience with your mom honestly i couldn't be more blessed and i'm not just saying (laughs) this because my mom is here um i will say this anytime day place but i am so i literally i wouldn't be where I am obviously like I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for my parents but truly career wise uh the support and just honestly the perfect balance of letting me and trusting in me especially at such a young age like uh, being growing up now I look back I'm like that would be so challenging I feel like to like uh surrender all control and just really listen to your kid um and take their lead and she really gave me that and instilled in me like listen to yourself like you're right like you your opinion matters at such a young age but also with like as a parent being like I don't know if this is great like yeah. probably shouldn't but she would yeah. still let me make the final say in a way um which always made me feel very empowered and I feel like uh she just honestly I I hope to be half the parent like <laughs> she yeah, that's is always one day thing. like uh if, if your kids 
it was like, I want to be in show business. You, you, at least you have the experience. No, I tell all the time. Like, I have no idea. I'm in show business and I don't even know how I would advise somebody else going into show business because there are no rules and there's no outline really to follow. Everybody's path is so different. So you're, you're always guessing. Um, so it's really hard. So I give her so much props. There's so much competition out there when it comes to musicians and mm -hmm. singers and TikTok. Everyone's, you know, trying to yeah. get ahead of the pack. And yeah. it's, it's almost, it's weird because at, on one hand, it's easier than ever to get your music out there, but also mm -hmm. it's harder than ever because There's you so don't much. have radio and MTV <laughs> to kind of push things. Yeah. Um, when I look at your your videos and listen to your music, what it kind of gives me is like '90s Janet Jackson. Vibes. Oh, I love that! Thank um, you. Like the, wow, like huge the, compliment. Th that's the way love goes era, kind of Janet Jackson. Thank um, you. Do you. How much do you huge pay attention compliment. to to like you know career models and I want to be like this person or I want to take this from that yeah. person versus over trying to be original, but also you want to do stuff that works. Yeah, you know? I think it starts with having. Um, a lot of self-awareness and also just knowing really first off, like what do I want to say? Like, how do I want to be presented to the world as an artist and also me? And like, what, what do they kind of have their own identities? Are they one? Um, and it's kind of like fi figuring that out first. And I feel like I've always had a really strong sense of like identity and knowing myself. Um, and then there's also like my influences, right. And the people that I also, you know, look and certain things about them I might want to like model my career maybe off of just because I have such huge respect of what they've done and uh, I also have just always been drawn to it and loved it and it's obviously inspired me so I think that comes naturally though I think it's like who you who you are around kind of rubs off on you a little bit it's the same like who your influences are you kind of can't help but to gravitate in a sense to that but I feel like for me it is just always like just staying true always like again gut feeling like just staying true to me and also like uh really just honestly emphasizing on those things that I feel like maybe make me unique or this like even more like what are those things that really make me even more me and I want to share those to the world right 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 um, totally yeah if that makes sense <laughs> yeah no 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 I, I totally get that um obviously music is your biggest deal but like your downtime, what are you watching these days? Ooh, on like TV? And, yeah. Oh, good question. See, I love like a good crime. <laughs> like, you like the true crime stuff? I love true crime. I love like Ozark, Breaking Bad, like drug dealing. The dark, scary yeah. stuff. Because it's so not like I it feels I I mean I'm not a drug dealer so it's <laughs> it's like mm. very cool it's good a to kind know. of yeah ju know. just like that honestly that kind of sounded very suspicious that I felt the I'm need to point that out dealer. no <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm a music drug dealer <laughs> um but I I love all that kind of stuff I like the suspenseful kind of like oh it's gonna happen next um but I also am like a total romantic so I do like rom-coms I am your typical rom-com girl. What's your favorite rom-com? Oh, <laughs> that's so hard. Maybe like, is it 10 things I hate about you? Yeah, that, that counts. One? Yeah. I like yeah, yeah. that one. Or, um, what's the one? I don't know if that's a rom-com, but monster in law or, um, monster in law, right? The one with Jennifer Lopez and, mm -hmm. Uh, where she's like her stepmom is crazy and yeah. that one's good but that's not really a rom-com that but kinda kinda, kinda. Yeah. yeah yeah I feel like Jennifer Lopez is in it it's yeah it's a rom-com <laughs> has a little bit in that yeah, yeah for sure but I like them all I don't discriminate I love all rom-coms and what are your like go-to like late night snack like, like what isn't sweet honestly or savory? um just depends it totally depends I have weird combo you want to know actually my favorite late night snack I'm putting you guys on okay green grapes you cut them in half that sounds like a lot of work <laughs> It, it also is, sounds like they but, would squish. They would just the, squish immediately. But the payoff is good. No, you put mm. lot so fresh lime juice. So you cut the grapes in half and then you squeeze fresh lime juice all over them. It tastes like okay. I'm actually not gonna say. I was gonna say they taste like sour patch kids, but they don't. But it kind of gives that same healthy like. Vibe. I guess because the grapes are sweet and then you got the tart. The from sour, the, yes, it's really good. Try it. That sounds like and a if you're Pinterest feeling... recipe or like one of those, like <laughs> one of those reels, one of those cooking reels. Yeah, it does. Like, do you want Sour Patch Kids, but you don't want to regret it afterwards? Try green grapes. And everyone's like, ah. but it is really good. It is really. And if you're feeling extra spicy, put some salt on there. Like, that's really good, too. 
that that was not the answer you're looking for. You're looking for like Doritos. Like no, I'm like no, that's green not, grapes. I, I like I like specific. <laughs> well, that's ta- that's uh, that, that's one thing we we didn't talk about. You're you're vegan. Yeah. I yes. Yeah. Yes. You're like, yes, <laughs> you're like, yes. Unless I'm like want to try some dessert really badly and then you do I'm occasional vegan. dairy like ice cream. Or e- something. Yeah. If it's especially if I'm on vacation and it's like this is our specialty from Italy. I'm like oh, you, well you threw Italy in there. Mm. Like, I got to you win. Yeah. You. <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> yeah, I really mm. shouldn't. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've been an advocate. Just, um, how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan since I was, mm, let's say like 13-ish, probably. Yeah. How much of an adjustment was it? Um, well, I kind of slowly progressed into it. So my mom has Your been mom's ve- vegan. Yeah, 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 she's vegan too. We did it together. She's been vegetarian since she was like 13-ish too, I think. Um, so I grew up kind of like here and there eating meat but when she would cook it was always vegetarian yeah. um so when i ended up deciding to cut out meat which the reason i'm vegan is for animal rights purposes too like mm-hmm. mainly and uh it was like a, a very easy i'd say transition because i already was eating vegetarian from my mom but going vegan was more of definitely especially i was in wisconsin at the time and it's land of cheese everywhere oh, cheese yeah. curds cheese this and it's cheese also heads, the midwest cheese. so like you don't have as many there's like, not as many options. Yeah. Maybe now it's a little better, but still, it's not like California or New York or right. Chicago, any of the main cities that have right. uh, a lot of options. But yeah, so that was definitely an adjustment. It took a minute, but I'm kind of getting. Have to get used I'm kind of getting into. You know, I, I'm a. I'm Are you LA. vegan? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. But I. But see, I don't. I'm not one of those meat eaters like Ew, vegan. You know, like yeah. I because here's the thing is like you you're not judgy. I'm not judgy. There's also, judgy on both sides though because there are judgy vegans that are like Ew, like. And Ew. I also like the vegans yeah. who are very quick to. To, to say that they're tolerant they're like but it's okay it's okay yeah, yeah. like go ahead and eat that's because we're gonna, scared because there was a period me. of time where vegans got such a bad rep where it's like you'll know if they're vegan in two seconds because they're gonna mention they're vegan i'm like well i mean we have to because you're gonna uh, try to serve yeah, us like yeah. sausage like but i see, but see my <laughs> thing is like i like you know black bean burgers yeah and stuff they're like that. good well because i view it i don't view it so much as like as it like being a substitute as being like an alternative version of exactly something. People get wrapped up in, oh, this is supposed to be like fake meat yeah. or something. No, and it doesn't taste like yeah, exactly that. Like, of course, it's change. not going to taste like chicken. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. pea protein. Okay, yeah. guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not going to. <laughs> so, what? Um, what? When, when's the EPA? Uh, to be determined. Oh, I, to be determined. Yeah, CBD. definitely. It's looking def- like uh, summer, like around okay. summertime ish. But okay. I have some new music coming out. Well, re- relatively we're soon. recording this in early May and okay. the interview will be out in early June. Okay. So, so maybe. probably the, the next, time, it'll in be the next, there. in the next couple of months then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you get nervous on release days about like how it's going to be received? Or you just like chill? I think it's normal to a little bit. Um, just because you fall so in love with something and you want other people to love your baby and your creation as well. Um, but honestly, I feel like if you feel like, for, at least for me, I personally, I love my music which and i really feel like it's such a good representation of me um so to me it's kind of like if you don't like it it's kind of like you don't like me which is cool like we don't we don't gotta like each other that's fine um but obviously it always feels nice when people seem to love it and enjoy it and you hear stories about people just like repeat repeat and it, it makes and you're me hoping good. that one song you get that one song that hooks on for whatever reason mm-hmm. and yeah and you never know what song it's gonna be no, too no. like so many times in the past i predicted songs that was like this one and then it's the one i never even thought of i'm like wow like yeah or <laughs> like happened? i like those stories where like a band's biggest song was like an afterthought or or like, yeah. the, or the manager didn't want it on there, their label didn't want yeah. it, or like, you know, for whatever reason, or... Um, it happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'd say more times than not, it usually is the song you're not suspecting. Well, it's also hard it. because you're listening to stuff over and over again. It's hard to be sure. objective and think yeah. about which one's going to be out. A hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll let you go. Thank you ah, so thank much you. for coming by so and being on the show. You. Congrats on the EP. Whenever thank the you. TBD date becomes less <laughs> TBD. <laughs> thank you. And what are your, your socials? Just Skylar Simone. Everywhere? Yeah, everyone's. I am Skylar Simone. I am Skylar Simone. Yep, that is. So me. there's somebody named. They just have Skylar Simone out there. So there was somebody named Skylar Simone, and I, I think. I don't remember if I reached out or somebody reached out, but they just never responded. So I was just like, eh, I'll go with I am. I am Skylar yeah, Simone. I hate that. Like, um, like Jordan, the guy who has like just Jordan is just like, it's an inactive yeah, they, account. They don't even post. They just like, yeah, just like, you like know, you're sitting on gold. And they'll put yeah. like a post of like, <laughs> 
a dog and all the comments would be like, let me have this username. Why, why? Would you, <laughs> all the Jordans Would you buy the this? Would you let me buy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wonder if, I, I don't know. Did you ask, are they going to sell it? No. No. I, yeah, that's, I should try though. I just wonder, I want to know what price tag yeah. These people. Like at Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. be a hundred grand. <laughs> yeah. At some point, it may be worth it. Uh, crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll be it. All right, guys. That'll be it for me. As always, go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edward Studio. Follow Demi at Demi underscore Ramos. Until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>